I missed it again. I see you, mosquito. Next time, you're mine. Hey, everybody. I'm Sari Custer, and this is Sari on Science. Now, today, I've got a confession for you. I could do without mosquitoes. I know. I know what some of you are saying. They're super important to the food chain. But the thing is, they love me, and I just don't get it. Every time I go outside, I get eaten alive. And I'm not exaggerating. A couple weeks ago, I was on a light vacation and spent 30 minutes having a lovely evening conversation out on the patio, and this happens. 46 mosquito bites up and down my legs. And the real kicker, the person next to me had nothing, zip, zero. Why is that? Besides being just unfair, why am I a tasty snack for mosquitoes? I know there's some science in this, so if you're ready, let's dig in. And let's start with a little background on our friend, the mosquito. There are over 3,500 species of mosquitoes worldwide, and not all of them drink blood. But those that do, only the females drink blood because they need the extra protein and iron to successfully make eggs. And really, any animal could do, but humans are particularly thin-skinned and relatively hairless, so we make an easy target. Otherwise, mosquitoes feed on plant nectar. That's actually part of what makes them important. Mosquitoes are pollinators in addition to being a food source for other animals. But that doesn't make mosquitoes any less annoying. Matter of fact, mosquitoes can be downright deadly. Mosquitoes are what we call a disease vector. They can transmit certain diseases from person to person, like malaria, yellow fever, Zika, West Nile, and a few others. And because of that, over 700,000 people a year die from those diseases. That makes the mosquito the deadliest animal on the entire planet. I know, right? Now, even though those diseases aren't as common here in the United States, I still wonder, why would somebody like me be at higher risk, and, and why do I get bit more often than other people? So I headed down to the University of Arizona to the Reilly Research Lab to ask that exact question. Yeah, so uh, mosquitoes have a fairly complex way of detecting their preferred host, and they do have preferences, like the mosquito that transmits Zika feeds almost exclusively on humans. It will feed on dogs or cats if there's nothing else available. But if there's a human present, it will zoom in on us first. Why? So um, there's all sorts of different chemical cues that we are giving off. Um, so when a mosquito uh, is a long ways away, she'll first detect carbon dioxide in the air. Okay. So as we're breathing, we're exhaling carbon Deep dioxide. Breathing. Exactly. Okay. And uh, the mosquito can detect that almost 100 yards away, wow. so from a very long distance. And so she'll start working her way back and forth and just follow that plume of carbon dioxide from us back to the host. And then when she gets within about 5 to 10 feet of us, uh, she'll start using visual cues. She'll see that there's a big person here that probably has blood in them. Uh, she'll also start to sense heat, uh, you know, especially at night. She can, uh, has heat detectors to okay. try to zero in on us. And then when she actually gets to us and lands on us, uh, she has taste receptors in her feet. And that's where she's really making the final decision, do I want blood from this host or not? And so as she's walking on you, she's actually tasting you. And then she'll... Like having a tongue on your feet. Exactly. Okay. And then ultimately she'll uh, decide whether she wants to feed on that or not and, and uh, begin probing. So what I'm hearing you tell me is working out uh, outside at night is probably bad. So a lot, you know, a lot of exhaling and uh, um, increasing my increasing body temperature. Heat, yeah. You're giving me a reason not to work out. Exactly. But, but that's okay. <laughs> um, uh, I'm not encouraging anybody not to work out. That's not a reason. You can take better precautions yeah. on your mosquito protection. Um, but okay, so carbon dioxide and body chemistry. And there's a rumor going around about beer drinkers and yes. whether or not beer uh, drinkers attract more mosquitoes. Can you enlighten us? Yeah. So there's been a lot of studies trying to figure out when the mosquitoes actually they're tasting you what she's zeroing in on and a lot of that still is not known there's entire research programs developed to olfaction or smelling in mosquitoes um, but there have been studies on various compounds to seeing if what you eat has any impact on how attractive you are to a mosquito and yes there was a study where the investigators took it upon themselves to drink beer and see if that made them more Good attractive research. to the mosquitoes. And in, in fact, it did show that there was some increased attractiveness. The bottom line is, if you're the only person there, it's not going to matter. A mosquito is going to feed on you one way or the other. Um, but yes, if you are in a room with a number of people, there are some people that just have natural volatiles that are more or less attractive to mosquitoes. And uh, there's, like I said, a lot of work being done to try to tease those apart because if you could figure out exactly what they're queuing in on, you can either develop repellents 
or you can set up traps so that you direct mosquitoes away from your backyard and into your neighbor's backyard or something. Great. Is there anything naturally that I could do uh, right now to um, help keep the mosquitoes away? Um, not too much. I mean, again, a lot of it's just your, you know, the the volatile compounds that you're born with. There's not a lot you can do. So I'm born super attractive to mosquitoes. Exactly. Well. Yeah. I mean, there is some evidence that some of the things you can eat, like beer and some other compounds, might influence, but it's very temporary and it's probably not worth giving up beer. <laughs> Excellent. Well, I'll, I'll be careful um, in the beverages I take in, um, but I'll just be super careful to uh, keep the insect repellent going. Uh, yeah, outside. absolutely. And that's the best thing you can do. Uh, either put on a, a 10 to 20 percent concentration of DEET or uh, lemon eucalyptus has also been approved by CDC okay. as another more natural option. It's not as long lasting and not quite as effective. So lemon uh, eucalyptus. Lemon eucalyptus. So okay. if you want to stay away from the DEET, that's another option for you. So there you have it folks, straight from the scientist's mouth. Some people get bitten by mosquitoes more than others because of the amount of carbon dioxide we give off, our body heat, and our basic body chemistry. Basically, I was born smelling like a delicious dish to mosquitoes and there's nothing I can do about it. So until scientists come up with a customized body chemistry based insect repellent, I'm going to stick to the commercial stuff I did today. I didn't get one mosquito bite while I was out here on the grass and I hope you do too. Stay safe and we'll see you next time with Sarian Science.